72 hours with the iPad I picked up on Saturday morning. Everything from playing with airplane games and flight sims with my son all cuddled up. It's fun poking and stuff on the screen and it squeaks. Uh, and cranking through email, backed up over vacation, at least after I got a keyboard, watching movies and puttering with lots and lots of weather and navigation applications. It seems like half the applications that were released, the iPad applications that were released with the iPad, are weather applications or have some sort of weather element to well, them. They're very well suited for the big screen. It's yeah, nice. and it's it's a lovely screen. It is a lovely screen, especially when it's got map data on it and weather data on it. Um, it's actually pretty crazy. I, I want to say that was my Radar Pro, and if I slide over here to Scenic Map West, um, it's a, this is a huge amount of map data. This is the one application I found that really stressed the one gigahertz processor in, inside of this thing. Um, because all of the map data is stored locally. This isn't downloading it off the web. But it's basically doing some real-time rendering of this beautiful shaded um, topo map with, uh, with uh, uh, political overlays on it. And uh, it's pretty cool. I just need to figure out a way to actually get GPS running because there's no onboard GPS on this. Mm -hmm. um, there will be on the 3G version. For anybody who's like, you could use Wi-Fi to locate yourself, not really when you're out of your house yeah, that would, that <laughs> or in a coffee shop. Would not be a best use case scenario. So you've actually had some hands on time with this. Yeah, we got one. Uh, Ryan actually got one for review this weekend, and he's been kind of hogging it the whole time. And that's one of my biggest complaints is I really wish that they had multiple user accounts on this device. I understand that it's kind of a personal gadget. You know, it's something you carry with you all the time, that you want to view your own movies and TV shows. Right and music and your applications and email but on the same time it's a very expensive luxury style device and a lot of households are only going to be able to afford one if any right so it makes sense to me to have multiple user accounts so you can switch back and forth between yeah. the profiles unless you only have one email account for your entire family and one iTunes account and one set of music and these days that's getting <laughs> less and less likely for sure but I've had some fun with it um, I found typing to be a little bit difficult it's hard to find like a comfortable position especially if you're on the couch I ended up using my cat as an iPad stand. That worked rather well until he got bored and wanted to leave. Um, <laughs> so, you know, I understand why you wanted to get the Bluetooth keyboard because, you know, typing for an extended amount of time is not easy. It's miserable. Um, and actually, I'm sitting here like, okay, let's pick up the notes. Let's do a new note. So... Let's see if the keyboard pops up this time. It's been very temperamental today. <laughs> Ever since I loaded your video game on it and, and downloaded a bunch of music, maybe it doesn't like my music. The keyboard maybe. hasn't been popping up, which makes me kind of remind, this is a very, for all of like this polish and fit and finish to the hardware, mm -hmm. um, this feels very point nine on some of the software elements, and especially with the applications. A lot of people writing applications for this didn't have actual access to the hardware, so they built it based on the emulator. Right. And some of the stuff, I've had a lot of software crashes. Some stuff's been running great, some not so great. Um, but there's been things like we've been noticing the keyboard not popping up when you wanted to log into a video game, when I was trying to get the notes demo to come up. Um, should we just skip straight to the pros and cons? Sure. Well, I'll give, I'll give you one of my big cons, and this is something a lot of people have made fun of me about. I think it's kind of heavy. It's kind of heavy for me, and I'm not a weakling, mm -hmm. But what I mean for me is that I would use it as an ebook reader right. a lot of the time. And my Kindle is just significantly lighter. Yes. And you know, holding it for a long period of time, whether you're on the train or on an airplane, if you're not propping it up for whatever reason, you know, it's it's a little bit on the heavy side. It feels very solid and well constructed, and that's nice, especially compared to the Kindle, which can feel a little bit chintzy. I, I wasn't gonna say plasticky. chintzy, a little plasticky, yeah. a little, you know, the clicky like sometimes doesn't feel very good, but it's not, for, for my, all my purposes, it's, it's, it's a little bit on the heavy side. Mm -hmm. And I understand I, I'm, I'm it's not got gonna, the look, battery look, in it's there. It's not like I have, you know what I mean, it's not like I'm a... You're, you're a strong guy. I'm How a burly guy. To it's got heft. It's got weight to it. I think it's got a big, fat battery inside of it. Mm -hmm. It's got a lot of glass in the screen. Um, it's got the aluminum case, so it resembles the aluminum slide off the couch and onto the dog <laughs> cases. We've been well, I understand you have to make concessions for things right. like, a, like a big battery that has a lot of battery life and the solid construction and the glass screen. I understand that part. For the e-reader, you've been reading some books on this. I've been playing around with it. How do you feel about reading?
thinking on this because I agree it is it's a little hefty. Mm -hmm. It's 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 certain it's definitely lighter than a netbook, but it is it is a lot heavier than a than a Kindle or a than Sony a Kindle. reader. How do you feel about reading on the screen? You know, I was actually very pleasantly surprised by reading on the screen. I expected it to be very straining on the eye, and I was worried that the words wouldn't be as crisp as they are on e-ink. But it actually looks pretty good, especially if you turn down the brightness a little bit and have some ambient light going on in the room. It's not as straining as I thought it might be. Um, you know, would I rather spend 10 hours on a Kindle over the iPad? Yes, probably. Mm -hmm. If I'm going to have a marathon reading session, I think I would still prefer to read on the Kindle. But, you know, if you're if you're going on a trip and, and just want to store some books on there and some movies, right. it's not bad for that at all. Um, you're definitely not going to get the kind of battery life you get out of any of the e-ink display right. devices where you're getting weeks. This is what, like 10 to 12 hours 10 battery 12. life? People are getting 12 hours. I'd, I'd say I'm getting close to that, if not getting that. Um, yeah, like 12 hours. I think that's where a lot of the weight is. I think there's a big honking battery in here. So you've got a bright, crisp touch screen. It is a really portable substitute for a netbook or MacBook. It feels good in the hand. Um, there's a ton of applications for it, at least if you can't iPhone-sized ones, because mm -hmm. there's not a lot of dedicated iApp ones that are scaled to fit the screen. Um, where it basically fills the entire screen and doesn't sort of upscale and look kind of fuzzy. Um, pages and numbers have definite work potential. Um, and applications I own, I've been able to load onto the iPad for free. Although I'm a little afraid to touch the touch the button for TomTom, uh, Tom, my navigation software. Oh, really? Yeah, because I don't want to pay for it twice because oh. it's like 70 <laughs> bucks. Um, cons, and there's a pretty long list. This is a finger print magnet of a screen. They should have shipped this with gloves, like the white gloves that Japanese taxi drivers wear, um, and sticky gloves, because there's no traction on the aluminum back, so if you set it down on something slippery, if you it, get a case, that'll it help, will slide but off. Yeah, well, that adds like, to the bulk. That's another con. $39 for the case for this from Apple. I don't even want to discuss it. It's 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 certainly aesthetically appealing. I think it probably cost me about two dollars to make. I have to say, yeah, when I felt this, I was like, oh well, that's an interesting texture. I paid thirty dollars for my leather Kindle mm -hmm. case, and this does not feel as good yeah. of a quality as that does. Well, Apple needs to keep the quarterly profits up. <laughs> um, the on-screen keyboard starts to really suck as soon as you get past 140 characters, at least if you touch type. Movies are really funny on this. Uh, so that's a 16 by 9 screen. You've got the big letter boxing on the top. So let's fire up one of my son's favorite shows. It's the Wonder Pets. And, you know, 4x3 fills the screen nicely. So now I want a 16x9 tablet, you know, about this wide on here would make it much better for watching HDTV and, and uh, movies. Uh, and it has a lot of the limitations of the iPhone. No multitasking or running of multiple applications, at least until next week if the, IO, uh, the OS 4.0 announcement hits. That would be today. Um, <laughs> today is of this showing. That actually, yeah. So you guys will know about the time this comes out. Uh, Safari has a maximum of nine windows. So if you like to run lots and lots of stuff, you won't be able to do it. Uh, or I like to have like 100 tabs open. I get nine, mm -hmm. uh, and they just disappear. It doesn't tell you you're running out of, of space. It just wipes it. And there's still no flash support. Um, and there's lots of weird things like finding out, you know, your screen is too small to run one of your primary business applications, or oh, another fantastic. one of your primary business applications doesn't run under this version of Safari, uh, or at least run properly. So GPS would have been nice too. I'll be testing out some Bluetooth devices this week to see if I can get it running because I want to use this as a big, like I want, I want my own version of like the the multi-zillion dollar Garmin's that they mount in race trucks, right. and this is not cheap. It's like 600 bucks which is like twice what I paid for either of my netbooks. So it's not quite a notebook. It's a lot more than an iPhone, especially an iPhone with a cracked screen. I think screen. you mean your iPad Nano. My, oh, my iPad Nano. I have an iPad Nano now. <laughs> um, I was going to try using this as a work computer for a week, but two of our primary cloud applications, Rundown Creator and Zimbra, uh, won't work or barely work under mm -hmm. the Safari browser. Also, the multitasking thing really kills it for me as a personal right. computing device. I mean, even if you're just going through Craigslist postings mm -hmm. and you want to jump over to Google Maps, suddenly then you have to jump back and forth between apps. It's, and it's like, like being a DOS where it's, it's either a terminal or a then fine, you know, give me the web-based version of Google Maps and in that case, you know, don't make me have to jump back and forth. That's you, that's one of the main annoying things yeah. for me as well. That might be fixed by the time this be. hits the street. Um, yeah, is it an intimate device? Yes. Is it fun? Yes. Is it expensive? Yes. Uh, and according to some reports online, fairly easy to damage beyond repair. I think this is one of those things where the 2.0 version is going to offer a lot more and I think it's also good that the applications are just going to get more and more stable because people are just really getting to develop on it. Yeah. Um, look, uh, by the way, also this fits perfectly in a one gallon freezer bag oh, and you know. can use the touch screen to it so if you need something to protect the screen 
go into the drawer, find the one gallon freezer bags. So are you happy with your purchase? I overall? I was a little frustrated that like I actually I was really frustrated. I was I wanted I, I can squeak by on Zimbra, which is our work email, because mm -hmm. I can use the mobile version, but it's very ponderous compared to the regular client. And the regular client would be great, except that I can't actually scroll the email, so some weird. I think there may be an Ajax issue inside this, because I think Zimbra is built on Ajax. I'm probably wrong about that. But, and like the primary tool we use to make the show, I can't run on this, because yeah. it tells me the screen resolution is too low. So it's like literally, I, it's already shot out of the water for me to use as a, as a work device. For me, I'm happy that I get the chance to use Ryan's at home. I, I don't <laughs> think I'm quite ready to throw down the money for it yet. I, I am, I'm excited to see what happens in version 2. Yeah. I would love to have a camera, for example. I still think that's something that they really should have put in the first version. Then I'm not really sure why they didn't. Bucks. I just don't well, know why. They but want okay. a clean upgrade path to version 2.0. And they probably want 4G networking or at least better... Uh, better uh, 3G quality. Well, who knows? Well, when they do come out with it, we'll cover that as well. <laughs>